So, um, at time of recording, Neil, um, Liverpool have had quite a week uh, within the seven days. They have beaten Manchester City, they have beaten West Ham, and they have lost Nottingham Forest, which, um, shocking enough, going by the season, is actually a vast improvement for Liverpool. Um, <laughs> but um, but I, I wanted to hone in on the, the Manchester City game in particular, because um, contrary to, to popular belief that Liverpool actually won that match, and again, I'm actually genuinely... As shocked as anyone about that, to be honest, because I was expecting Lamps to the slaughter, but it didn't actually happen. Like Liverpool showed up and they and they played a great game, and Man City kind of overcooked it in the end, like they often do at, a, at Anfield. Um, but weird enough, like and again, it was a one 0 win, and it was it was a close enough call in the end. Um, but that's not really what I want to talk about tonight in the podcast. It was actually something that's happened kind of after the game that I'm actually quite concerned about. Um. And again, this is perhaps coming from a very unique perspective of a Liverpool fan. But I'll ask you first, Neil. Like, um, uh, do you think Kurt Jurgen Klopp is a racist? <laughs> well, see, the funny thing is, they couldn't call him a racist because he never specifically stated anything racial at all. So they had no. to use the really washy term xenophobic, um, which is actually, by the way, a worse term than racist. Yeah, <laughs> um, exactly. Is anybody uh, wants to grab a dictionary? Um. So no, it was fucking ridiculous. Like to even to even say that it shows like almost gargantuan levels of like hubris and like just ab- huffing your own bullshit like c- constantly. Like it, it's awful. Just to merely to, to be accused of that, just from merely pointing out the ownership model. Like yeah, it it, it was crazy and um. Yeah, not a lot of people came out of that like looking really, really good. Um, I think one of the things we started pinging around now, one of the people not who weren't involved with it, but definitely didn't exactly uh, cover himself in glory, was Eddie Howe. Yes. Um, oh, well, I'll get onto that. <laughs> but sticking with a uh, sticking with Liverpool City, I I think it's really fucking stupid from City to do that. I'm like it's. Really, you're gonna attempt victimhood? That's bollocks, man! Like everybody yeah. knows what you're about. Everybody. That's why you've, the whole purpose of your existence is to convince people that you aren't what you clearly are. You are, yeah, yeah. You no, know, it's just all smoke and mirrors and a shitload of really dodgy financing. Um, yeah. so- I, I just find it really concerning because what I found from that, like, okay, like, like this is just a fo- This should be just a game of football between. The, the two title protagonists for the last couple of years. This is the the the, the modern the English modern equivalent of, of El Clasico. This is the Real Madrid, the Barcelona, the two teams that have been vying for the championship for the last couple of years. And this is yet another game in their chat in their story. But the trouble is that over the last couple of years, it's just got so unpleasant between the two teams, between the two fan bases, and it's all being pushed by the admins of the two of the two teams. Because one will say something, and as damage limitation, the PR from the opposite side will go. So, like, as a few, a couple of examples, like, um, like Liverpool fans have have kind of not given given themselves uh, any favors here from like historically attacking the the team bus of Man City, and now it's become kind of a running joke to do it. Nor did Weirdly. Klopp in, in the current scenario that we're talking about. Nor did yes. Klopp exactly do himself any favors by getting himself sent off for attempting to eat one of the fourth officials. He deserved it. I don't give a fuck. But the point is, like, <laughs> well, like funny like, enough, like, actually, before yeah, Klopp, it, it's weird. That that was actually quite a throwback for me. I actually got a really mad sense of deja vu because before Klopp came to Liverpool, we, we knew him from that. Yeah, we <laughs> used to laugh at him at Dortmund, like doing his mad gurns at some poor German fort official. Yeah. It's like I will fucking eat you, and it did look like I remember <laughs> us sitting in a bar <laughs> after college, like yes. just looking at memes of Klopp going, "Oh my god, he it do, really does look like he's about to dislocate his lower jaw and swallow this motherfucker whole." <laughs> yeah, <know? laughs> like it really does. So to see it again, I I was like, "Oh, that takes it's a, fr- it's a refreshing change of pace." I'm in my mid twenties yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I remember nostalgia. I remember nostalgia. <laughs> 
but but that's the thing, right? So like so yeah, like obviously Klopp and and he'll have hold his hands up. He got very he got um really annoyed at that and and rightfully so he gets a touchline ban for it. But the what I found this is what I find really really concerning about it is that everything against Liverpool is being weaponized. And again, uh, this is only coming from off the heels against the Forest game, which we rightfully lost. We were the worst team in the game. But Northern Forest fans were were chanting Hillsborough chants against us. And I'm thinking to myself, of all the teams to be chanting about that, shame on you, Nottingham Forest fans, to be doing that. Absolute fucking shame. Because if roles were reversed, if you were in the opposite stand, that would have been your fans that were crushed and your people would have been killed. And you have absolutely no right to be chanting that. That's absolutely fucking disgusting. Neither do Manchester City fans have any right to be chanting that. Neither do anyone, any fan base, have any right to be chanting that. And the worst thing about it is that Anfield was vandalised with Hillsborough and Heysel uh, references. There were chants made about it. And because, Ma- and I do genuinely believe this, because Manchester City lost this game and didn't want to lose face, they did not address it directly. They had to wait until Pep Guardiola actually actively said it from the heart. And I do believe him when I say, I do think that like, Pep himself, I think, was was quite ashamed about this because oh, yeah. this is such an unnecessary tactic. Absolutely. That, that, that was something that... You've got muted there, Neil? Try again? I think you might have cut off there. I don't know. No, it's fine. Oh, you got it. Yeah. yeah. He's very low. Hang on. You got this. Have I? We've been silenced by the Abu Dhabi group. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're out to get us. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, like it's to, to cover up <laughs> this this technical mishap, but like like I, I feel for Guardiola in a sense because this is just a very strange, like uh, unnecessary thing from everyone in the team. I thought because for for Man City to do this is 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 completely unnecessary, but this is also coming out hot off the heels of say a report coming out about the the incident at Stade de France where something very similar to Hillsborough could have happened and like realistically shouldn't if it wasn't for the Liverpool fans being so being so well behaved that they didn't essentially kick off and, and cause an incident you know um so i think it's a very 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 poor taste well, poor taste is kind of the reoccurring theme of this rivalry if you want to call it that but it's just petty bullshit to me i don't think it's a real rivalry you know yeah, absolutely. Um, Pep stated that he 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 denied the Liverpool that the relations between the two teams has gone toxic, hmm. and um, let's be honest, they've been toxic for years. It, it, yeah, it, it's been toxic for years, and I think. But um, I fully agree with you that Pep probably definitely prop when Pep hears about the chance going on, he's like, "No, look, we shouldn't be doing this. Like, absolutely not." Um. So yeah, so um, it, it's just it's. It's a really bitter situation, and it's just going to get worse. I, I don't see that getting yeah. any better, to be perfectly honest. No. And I think it's from the years of like City denying a golden generation mm. of Liverpool like far yeah. more league titles than they really should have won. And you're just going, oh, you've done it by cheating, and we're just going to lean into it. Mm. And that's just basically it. And I think it's just, yeah, I don't, I, I don't see this, I don't see this getting better anytime soon. No, I, I don't. I, I I don't because I think the the actual tactics from from big teams like Manchester City is very very obvious, and this is the part that I found really really concerned, and um, particularly about this because it wasn't the fact that like it, it, like Manchester City just couldn't accept the fact that they lost a football game, and they couldn't accept that they lost against a diminished um, backs against the wall type of Liverpool. Now, lads, I don't know if you've seen the Barcelona game. But the worst type of Liverpool to face is a diminished backs against the wall. Liverpool. <laughs> yeah. Where the one thing you don't want is a fucking Divock Origi corner taken quickly. You know what I mean? Like, that's when Liverpool are at their best. I mean, I can even point to the Dortmund game that Klopp lost against us. Yeah. Was, or, um, sorry, or rather when he when he, he came to us in the first season. Like, yeah, we, we were playing a B team. Like half our, all of our most main stars were injured at that time. And we managed to get a result there. Like this is a this is a, this is a thing that Liverpool have in their locker. In Absolutely, their, in their yeah. Um, like you oh. need to look at the thing about Liverpool is the more weaknesses you think you see, it's like no, that's not actually what you're seeing there. So you look at that team and you're thinking, oh, they're fielding James Milner in defence. Deadly. I'll be able to take advantage of that. No, you can't. No, you actually you're not you're not going to. Um, in particular, that particular, I, I bring up Milner because there was there was the matchup between himself and Foden 
yeah. in that game, where in the corresponding fixture, I think last season, Foda made him alive. Mm. And yeah. It was the exact opposite type of game. Totally, totally in this one, he, yeah. he just got no change out of him at all whatsoever. Like Milner just kept up going. Now, can Milner keep that up? Fuck no, he cannot. But yeah, for this game, and that's all that matters, really. Yeah, exactly, and that's and that's almost enough for for Liverpool in that sense. Where like they know, I think Klopp accepts like he he doesn't have the the resources that Manchester City have, and let's not pull punches here. They do have limitless resources. Uh, one way or another, let's like let's not fucking muddy call this at all. Man City, Man City can have their official lines and say, "Oh, we're living between our or within our means." Yes, but you have expanded your means. You know that's not this is the argument here, and we'll get to Eddie Howe and his fucking hypocrisy. In a minute. <laughs> but and PSG for that matter, because we know about them as well. So like, but the the actual the, the concerning thing about this is that Man City could not accept that they lost this game to the extent where. They had to go into damage limitation mode on a PR side, not on a footballing side in terms of like, and we know what Guardiola is like. If he loses one game, then efforts are doubled and trebled for the next game and they win the next one. That is just their their modus operandi, which is how all big teams operate, rightfully so. But the Manchester City group to have essentially uh, attacked Liverpool indirectly is what the way I would phrase it. They haven't put any kind of hit like articles out or anything like that, but they've actively refused to acknowledge the Hillsborough chance from their own fan base, which I think is vile and disgusting because any any club could have been involved in that. Like Liverpool could have been knocked out of the quarterfinals of that match, and some other team would have been involved in that horrible tragedy. Like I said, not the Forest fans today being absolute bastards and chanting about that. Well, that could have been you. Like it's the same thing. It has nothing to do with Liverpool. It has nothing to do with Scousers. That is, it's a universal fan issue, and the same with that for France. These things have to be addressed. And what, my, what makes me concerned about it was that the only thing that the Manchester City group were keen on was telling their journalists to attack Jurgen Klopp and to report about Jurgen Klopp and to talk about the oh well, you know, grassroots football is uh, is dwindling. And they put a picture out of Klopp eating the the linesman. I was like, is that the picture you want to take? Because Thomas Tuchel did it a couple of months ago. Antonio Conte does it on a weekly basis. And Jose Mourinho would probably hire an assassin to kill a linesman if he had a choice. So, like, let's not beat around the bush here. Like, Jurgen Klopp is not the only person to show emotion on a football pitch. In fact, I'm pretty sure Pep Guardiola would have done the same thing in his position. So, this is complete hypocrisy. But what upsets me most is that it's in journalists, in print media, who clearly have just so much delight in having access to the city group. And who evidently have vested interests. I mean, I'm going to call out a couple of names here, like Martin Samuel, for example, who has been a hack for a very long time, hence why he works in the Daily Mail. And he in particular, right, he puts out a hit saying, well, actually, he, he does a well, actually article, which gets on my tip. <laughs> well, actually. Right? I hate articles like this, which is like, well, actually, they are living within their means. They do have the money. It's like, shut the fuck up, man. Literally two weeks ago, you were on a fucking yacht with the Abu Dhabi group themselves with your son who works in the club. You are you are nepotistic. You have a conflict of interest. You cannot write about them. But as Daily Mail, they have no standards. On the, in the exact same paper, you've got another uh, uh, writer called Dominic King uh, who, puts in a, who puts in a post or an article saying the clientele journalism that Manchester City have is vile and disgusting. The same fucking paper. Two completely contradictory articles. It's like, for fuck's sake, people, is anyone reading this, this shit anymore? The Telegraph has pieces out. The Mail had pieces out. The Sun naturally will, uh, you know, want to, like, nuke Liverpool if they had a fucking chance. And I just find it so fascinating that every every paper from that group, let's say, have, have politicised this to a certain extent. Like, are you really going to take the side of a state-sponsored football club over a team and a manager who's made absolutely valid points about how it's an unfair playing field for teams to be backed by governments. Do you know what? That's the bed you're going to lie in. If you want to take the the the, the Abu Dhabi and Qatar and, and, uh, and uh, Saudi money, go for it. Absolutely knock yourself out. But do not ever politicize these topics over things that should be spoken about in a completely rational manner. You do not fucking politicize Hillsborough. You do not politicize Heisel. And you absolutely do not politicize that to France. Because I've seen horrendous reporting on those topics in the past. We've all seen it. And like I said, it's not a Scouser issue. This is a fan issue, full stop. And 
like I said, this independent report has got absolutely no traction whatsoever from certain uh, papers because they're so focused on spinning for Manchester City. And it genuinely makes me ill because this is now the the news cycle. This is the story now. They're going to talk about Jurgen Klopp making incendiary remarks towards Newcastle. It's like, Newcastle, you know what bed you're lying in. It's raked in Saudi blood money. You've accepted this. You'd rather that than fucking Mike Ashley. So, the pan, frying pan, meat, fire. You know what I mean? Like, what else did you want? Same with, with Manchester City. You've accepted this money for years. You are now normalized to it, as Jamie Carragher said in his article. In, embrace it. Embrace the money because that's what you wanted in the first place. You want to be bigger than Manchester United. You are now financially at this stage because you've been backed by the Abu Dhabi group. So, the, 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 as you said, the victimization, the victim card is pathetic for Manchester City because they're not the victims. They're absolutely not the victims. And neither are Liverpool, for that matter. So when you hear a chance about them being told about that, it's like anyone could have been the victim of, of something that is not a football-oriented issue. So when something happens on the pitch, then it's politicised off it. That should annoy everyone, not just one club, not just me, not just anyone else. That should annoy anybody. You know what I mean? Because like I said, like, like you could be playing Arsenal, I think you guys play Arsenal after the World Cup. And... I guarantee you, if one... I mean, we play City. Yeah, City, sorry, yeah. yeah. Um, like, if you play, if there's one flashpoint in that game and you guys happen to beat City, that flashpoint would now be the story because the City Group can't accept the fact that they've lost. And I find that baffling to me because it's like they can't accept the fact that they lost a loss of football game. There has to be an excuse. There has to be a reason. As much as Klopp gets slagged off for, for explaining why his team lost to allow Manchester City to go to journalists A, B, C, and D, here's your lines, feed them out to the public, and don't ask questions. I think it's actually more insidious. Yeah, you know? nothing to do with the fact that Salah roasted Cancelo on toast from a long ball yeah, and just basically, you know, smoked Ederson. Hmm. Nothing to do with that. And nothing to do with the fact that he'd done that twice before that and was very unlucky not to score on both occasions. Um, exactly, yeah. You know, that's absolutely not. Salah's faded. He's a hack. He can't do it anymore. He, he, he's wearing his brand new, uh, he, he's wearing his wages on his body. That's why he's so fucking slow now. Mm. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, <laughs> narr- that's the narrative. It's not that, you know, he's just not had a good start to the season. Yeah. He's still a slayer. Yeah. And look, and so, so when this so when this conversation come out then, so obviously the flashpoint, the recent flashpoint of this has been, Club remarking about uh, certain clubs not having a ceiling, and again, if you if you read between the lines, you know who's talking about. He's talking about PSG, Manchester City, and and, and Newcastle United, because they've both they've all taken state state sponsored money. Let's clarify this: it has nothing to do with the fact that they're all Arabic, right? It's state sponsored money. If the Chinese own the football club, it'd be the same thing. If the Americans own the football club, the American government, I should clarify, owned a football club, it'd be the same argument. Like it's this is. This is down. This is the difference between being owned by an eccentric businessman like fucking Nottingham Forest, who like who say, Do you know what? I'm going to sign 20,000 players and play them all at once. Money ball, let's do it. This is different. This is actively greenwash. This is sports washing. This is trying to use your football club as a political weapon, essentially, to make people like you. And that's exactly it. This is Manchester City being used as a mask for a far more insidious regime and it's the same with Newcastle and it's the same with PSG and football fans are just happy to take it because like I said they've got mitigating circumstances they've got petty rivalries they want to settle they want to be the best and all this sort of jazz without looking at the real the, the bigger picture that they're just being used in a geopolitical landscape this sounds like I'm on a fucking Alex Jones podcast I know <laughs> but that's the level of that's the level of proximity these clubs have to this and so when the club makes these remarks, and he's absolutely fucking valid in these remarks, by the way, like he's absolutely correct. I think everyone can, hopefully, anyone with a football and with a with a knowledgeable brain can agree on this. So now let's see what Eddie Howe thinks about this conversation. When he said, I think a couple of months ago, when he took the job, that oh, I, I don't want to talk about um, uh, those kind of issues. There, I'm fo- more focused on the football. And then a couple of months later, when Jurgen Klopp sticks his nose and things going, like I think it's very disrespectful for him to to to, to discuss the, the do that to the linesman. It's like, and uh, and again, throw mud in his uh, in his direction. It's like he's a bad influence, you know, with all these sort of shit. It's like, me, you are the face. I'm, not, I'm sure you don't want to accept this. You are the face 
of a regime who still beheads journalists. So I would not be wanting to, to, to stand on the moral high ground where you are, mate. You know what I mean? You literally on the same week you make these kind of like moral pontifications, your club announces a fucking season tour in Saudi Arabia for your overlords that own you. You know what? You don't have a leg to fucking stand on. You absolutely don't. And I don't, and don't get me wrong. I like a Eddie Howe as a, as a coach, and I think he's doing a smashing job in that regard. But how fucking dare you start throwing shade at everyone else just because your your PR overlords told you to? Yeah, you pretty, have absolutely no right to say anything like that. No, he's, he's not really a leg to stand on. And <clears throat> as much as I like the way in kind of on it, yeah. um, unfortunately, I don't think there's anything either of us can add to the video that was put around of Philippe Clare. I think he summarizes the best. Yeah, he, he and he's genuinely like he gets he's quite heated in that. You can see him. He pauses at times because he's like, I don't want the course. That was yeah. for sports, Joe, or something like that. I was like, Jesus Christ, they're putting out some quality shit. Yeah. Um, but like, um, if you're an Arsenal fan, you'll you'll have heard a lot of Philippe Claire because he is an Arsenal fan. Mm. Um, so he does he contributes quite a lot to a lot of Arsenal blogs, in particular Ars blog. Um, he's, he's also on the Football Weekly podcast if you're if you're a Guardian Football player, yeah. Weekly one as well. So he's yeah. very erudite. He's very 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 French and very intelligent and very eloquent. And he completely loses in this uh, in a, in a good way, by the way, because he, he's he's it's passion. He's, it's he's passion. Raining it again. Just, yeah. The way he's just he goes a hot hell like it's crazy. And it's like how, how dare he attempt to question. Um, Jorgen Klopp on ethics, like Jorgen Klopp, he's like any other manager, but fucking Jorgen Klopp, like yeah. you're going, you're going to, you're going to try to claim the moral high ground over this guy, the fuck off, like you know, well he doesn't say fuck off, but it's very obvious he wants to. words that effect, let's yeah, say. yeah, um, and if anybody want, really wants any kind of background on what we're talking about, that you re- like, you definitely be able to find it online somewhere. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it went it properly viral, viral. And yeah, so it's just that's that's just it. Like I think Hell's drank the Kool Aid completely. Like he is now towing that line. So at the beginning, yeah. when he said, "Look, I don't want to talk about that," and that's you know, in all fairness, that's kind of fair enough. You know, yeah, you, it is. It is a way. It is a heavy question to ask a football coach. It is. It well, is a heavy question, yeah. but it is still fence sitting. But yes. then again, people are like, "All right, then." Well, I'm, I'm kind of like, if you're in a difficult situation, sometimes sitting on the fence is actually the best thing to do. Other people may not agree with that, and that's of course a conversation for an, another day. Mm. But he, he's not he's not sitting on the fence anymore. He is no. very much he's very firmly come down on one side uh, of the fence, and it's the wrong side. Mm. <laughs> it's the it's the horrible one, and just just. To even say, like, how can I even goes into this? Like, he says, I would actually respect Eddie Howe if what he did was, yeah, we got shit loads of cash and we're spending it as we want. If he just mm-hmm. came out and just said it, yeah, we got loads of money and we're just going to spend it. Um, he's like, I, that, that'd be fine. Nobody could poke holes in that. Like, you can't no. deny that. And also, you kind of can't really dispute it and you can't wish that your team weren't doing it. So you're like you kind of boned either way. You like you yeah, can, no. You can argue about the people would take that, they would take that fucking goblin. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, you're you're gonna, you're just left with arguing about the origins of said cash. But what's being done with it and what he said is being done with it. You can't mm-hmm. argue with it at all. But instead, he goes, "Oh no, no, our spending's keeping in, in in terms with the rest of the league." And you're like, "No it fucking is. You spent more money. You spent more money net than any. Actually, sorry, you spent more money net than everybody bar Manchester United." And yes. that's only because the Anthony deal pushed them over. But enough of the exactly, Anthony yeah. deal, they had been way, they had been far out with the, with the net spend this calendar mm-hmm. year. It's something like two hundred and thirty million. Two hundred and seventy million, I believe. It is. Seventy fuck. Um, and like it's yeah, it's it's. No, I think it's all provably yeah. wrong. Yeah, you know it is. It, it totally is, and. And like I said, we can, we can expand this conversation at the PSG because they're the same. They're, they're, like they are uh, a massive tiny project, and we're going to talk about them next week uh, at great length as to why this is failing on a, on a grandiose scale. Um, but but like I said, like they, they're using they use football clubs to to get people to like them. Especially particularly in a year that we're going to go to fucking Qatar for World Cup that was built by slave labor. You know, like they want to control the narrative as best they can. My concern, however, is that. This is just not going to be confronted with anymore. 
you know, like the fact that there was so much very clearly client pieces done in the likes of the Mail and the, and the Telegraph and, and all these kind of like, shall we say, right wing or right leaning, let's say, it'd be unfair to call them right wing, it'd be right leaning uh, papers. You know, there's not enough cross examination about that because you are going to get the same number of journalists who want the access as opposed to actually confront these people about their vested interests exactly I, I don't think it's a, I, don't think, I, I don't think it's a case of like they're politically aligned the, 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 no, the line pieces that they're politically aligned with the regime behind Newcastle and city no that would be unfair I think it's more of a case of it's not a case of bias it's more of a case that they're they're not biased they're servile yes and, yeah I, I, place, I, yeah 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 it's just they used to be bought that's just mm. the pieces for hire and you know, there aren't no higher bidders than the Saudi public investment fund. <laughs> you know, so uh, yeah. uh, that's that, that's just basically it. And even then, yeah. like, how weighing in on this? Like, he claimed that he made his initial comments, uh, sorry, his initial rebukes to Klopp's comments because he felt the need to stand up for his team. I was like, you're not standing up for the team there. You're standing you're up for the owners. Club. Yeah. Standing up for the owners or standing up for the club. It's like, again, owners in the club are two separate things. Like, Arsenal fans know this very much so. I'm like, we... Yeah. Until uh, like the the Cronkies got their shit together, like we were fucking adamant to get completely like it was like no, we're not Cronky owned. Oh, well, sorry, we are Cronky owned, but we're not Cronky run because they yeah. don't do anything. They don't fucking do anything. They don't invest anything. Now that's subsequently changed. And look at Arsenal's fortunes. Holy shit! Um, so that's it. Like to, to say, oh, I'll go stand up for the group. He could have just told the line that he started the season with. He's like, look. You know, he's entitled to his opinion. He'll say what he wants. Um, If he wanted to, like, jab, ha- have a nice little jab at Klopp, he'd turn around and say, well, you know, I-, I would like to think that if I lost the game, I wouldn't be complaining about the owners of the other team because they're not the ones on the pitch or something like that. Even then, that would be a nice little jab. It would also be completely true. Um, yeah. Like, you know, again, that's that's nice. But to turn around and say blatant sports washed lies... It's yeah. just incredible. Like there's some when when you look at the vast wealth of things that Eddie Howe could have said in response mm. to that, that would have left his sort of reputation intact and not been a complete fucking shill. Just go the wrong way with every single fucking answer. And I'm like, oh no, this guy has fully drunk the Kool-Aid. He's not misspoke. He's mm. definitely a part of this now. Uh, of that. You know, mm-hmm. he, he's not a Newcastle man, he's a Saudi guy. Yeah, Abu Dhabi. Yeah, exactly. Whichever the fuck one owns them. <laughs> no, no, you're right. You're, you're at the first one, and 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 that's that's the, that's the fear I would have in a sense where it'll get to a stage where you can't. Like, and like I said, these are still regimes that do not believe in free speech. They don't believe in journalistic uh, integrity or access or anything like that. They would much rather people toe the line and respect. Uh, they want uh, they they want respect for themselves, but they don't reciprocate it, and that's the. That's it. It's not respect. They want deference, and that's the difference. Um, and you definitely see that with Manchester City in particular, where you think that, uh, and of course, when you listen to Manchester City fans, they will they will say, "Look, they've done a, a lot of incredible work for the community in a sense. They've re- refurbished a lot of places, and this is how they 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 gain favor. They do um, go into the pride area of the of of a country. They renovate. They do um, they sweeten it and and do all these sort of things. But that is a that is a tactic to get you to love them and to get you to, to be in their pocket and to be appreciative of them. Because like I said, they have a lot of money and they want, um, they're, they're doing it for very insidious reasons. The reason I say that is because I, I'll, I'll direct you to a article that Barney Rone made uh, on the guardian. And this is mostly about the guitar world cup. And it's a very depressing piece because it's actually talking about guitars, uh, significance in the geopolitical uh, military circle, let's say, but how they're a very important strategic sp- spot. And essentially, the Guitar World Cup is a avenue to make you forget about that. Um, and, and that's the kind of level of journalism that we're probably not going to get over the next couple of months because a lot of it is going to be silenced. Um, well, it's going to be silenced coming, it's going to be silenced coming out of the country. Of the country. Not, yeah. Like there's going in, yes. There's, there's, there's yeah. lots of, you know, other pieces around. There's lots of other publications like. Mm. Um, you know, yeah, you'll you're gonna get mouthpieces from the Telegraph, the Star, so on. But like, yeah, generally, you know, it. But all the other ones aren't going to be ignoring it. They're going to be reporting the proper 
truth. Of yeah, the, that, that was Miguel Delaney's point. It says, like, yeah, I'm still going to guitar. I, I'm a journalist. This is what we do. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's their job. You know, like, there's no point boycotting it because it's still going ahead either way. You might as well draw attention to something that's happening rather than just like, ignoring it. And that's yeah, exactly, yeah, like if very it's very bad way to look at it. it it's going to happen, you know, so you, yeah. you might as well just go in there and disrupt from within. Yes. You know, so I'm um, like, yeah, I, I, I'm on board with that. There's lots of scenarios where that doesn't apply, but in this one, yeah, no, I, 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 I'm on board with his reasoning there. Yeah, I think so too, because like I said, it's, it's important that people know. And like I said, it's important that people know about like the fact that like Manchester City are an arm of a, of of this operation, in the same way the Newcastle are an arm of a different operation, and all this sort of all these different things. And like I said, it's like the, this is not just a football thing. These kind of groups are in different sports. Like if you're if you're if you're a golf fan, you've heard about the 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 live the LIV um yeah, the LIV that's yeah. torn the PGA tour apart. Like this is a tactic to basically go here. You're you don't like this deal. Let's give you a bigger deal and make you love us. And that's that's all this is. And so it's and that's not and again this is not all saying that's a good or a bad thing. That's up to you to decide. Because again, the important thing is that you make your own decision on this. But just be aware of it. Like know like where this money is coming from. In the same way that like if I if Liverpool got taken over by a regime like this, morally I wouldn't be comfortable with it. Even if you started winning more competitions and more 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 trophies, I wouldn't feel right about it. But that's the type of ethical consumer I am. Of of it's very hard to to consume football ethically like this. But you try your best. You pick your battles, and this is a battle you can you can pick, especially if you are a Liverpool fan. They're politically they're all they're a lot of them are aligned the same way. And they're aligned against big regimes. That's kind of the whole thing about Liverpool, if you if you know the history, <laughs> you know, and um, particularly recent history at that. Um, but that's the only thing. It's 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 just to 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 see it happening in the year of 2022 when we've had almost history repeat itself is actually quite scary to me because um a lot of this would have been would have gone um unanswered. And and in a, in an age of uh, like video of, of 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 phones and and stuff being documented constantly there's still narratives being pushed and pr being spun it, it's kind of uh, it, like scary to me in a sense because there's a lot of people who just believe this hook line and sinker you get ten thousand burner accounts online spewing whatever shit they want it's 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 very concerning and uh you know that's kind of stuff you'd see in american politics it's stuff you see about brexit now you're seeing about Liverpool, Man City. That should never be the case. You should just enjoy a, a, a game of football rather than worrying about the fucking quasi hypothetical ethics about it all. You know? Yeah. Well, you've got billions backing up, like, like the yeah Man City Liverpool game and mm. the next Newcastle game and so on and so forth. So when you get that much cash, you know, yeah, you're yeah it money that, talks. You're that, always going to yeah. have that money spin. So yeah, I I don't know, but I I'm not too. I'm not too frantically worried about it because, you know, there are a lot of opposing views to it. There's a lot of like mm. truthful, you know, there's a lot of truth speakers, and yeah, yes, you're just, gonna, yeah. You're just gonna pick your not only pick your battles but pick your pick your news sources as well. Yeah, and that's the scary part because like that's kind of what people do on the opposite side as well. We slag off them off for 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 picking outlets, but. Sometimes that's kind of what happens when when you you very clearly see that like someone's not doing the job properly, unfortunately. And that's uh, I'm I'm looking at certain people in certain papers, just saying. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's uh, it shows you what what a one nil uh, like loss for Manchester City do. Imagine if they lose them at game three 0 they'll probably declare war on us or something like that. that's that's yeah, they crazy. very much could have lost that game three 0 Yeah, <laughs> it very much could have. Yeah. Oh dear. Um. Yeah. It's just um. It's a, it's a way of football's gone, eh? It's um. I, I let's see what happens now if they lose against someone else this season. Like who who else could they lose against? Like if they lose against like you know, uh, who's their bogey team recently? Palace Wolves. They like they were the bogey teams for a while and they smashed. Spurs them, like, was their bogey team. Spurs, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to they've, see them. Like, fucking, fucking they yeah. lost. They lost to them home and away last season. I think yeah. they lost them. No. How how, yeah. how would they reply against Spurs? Build a bigger stadium, I think. Uh, <laughs> well, Spurs aren't doing too well now. Unfortunately, no. They're... Dirging under Conte's horrible, 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 horrible football. Despite the fact that this is probably, that I read somewhere that this is actually their best start in about seventy years. Yeah, it's about <laughs> that. Yeah, it's um, a great start. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. That um, maybe that's something else we could talk about in a separate thing. But like, absolutely, yeah, uh, yeah, that's just it. Yeah, but there you go. So um, yeah, more of the story as we get it. But um, the main headlines are: Jurgen Klopp is not a racist, and um, everyone's hypocrites.
Mm-hmm.